Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. I'm back with some more time talk. I, I'm very happy with the response from the last video I did on International Atomic Time. It actually really exceeded what I thought it would do. So let's do part two. Uh, this will not be the final part. I definitely will do at least one more because uh, today we're going to talk about coordinated universal time. Prior video, if you didn't see it, uh, please do check it out dealt with international atomic time, in short, uh, 450 clocks from 80 countries around the world. Uh, they all submit their time to a place in France. The place in France does a weighted average and gets the real time or the, the current time and then issues a report every five days or so, uh, so everyone can see how far off their clock is from the new standard. Uh, and they can adjust if they want or they don't have to. So today, we're going to talk about the time that's actually on your watch, and that is what we call Coordinated Universal Time, abbreviated <laughs> UTC. Why is the acronym out of order? It's simply kind of an agreement, I guess, between France uh, and America, and I guess the rest of the world, really, that the acronym, acronym acronym does not go in the order in their language. In the U.S., obviously, UTC. It's called Coordinated Universal Time. In France, it's, I want to say, TUC or something. Doesn't matter. Just know that UTC is the new time standard. UTC time standard has been around since 1960. Before 1960, uh, we used GMT. So, GMT is a time zone, though. UTC is not a time zone. It is a time standard. So when I, in New York, am not in daylight savings, I'm at UTC minus 5. When I am in, when I am in daylight savings, I'm in UTC minus 4. Makes it, for, makes it easier to figure things out. Not all the world goes, if they do DST, that they do it at the same time. I know Europe does it at a different time than the U.S., um, but it's important to note that UTC is a standard, doesn't follow daylight savings time at all. The goal of UTC, and here's where it gets tricky, the goal of UTC is, I'm looking at notes, is to be within one second of mean solar noon along the prime meridian. Zero degrees longitude, so this, that line right there that does pass through or near uh, Greenwich, England. Uh, it has nothing to do with England, though, no, just it's the standard that they chose. The sun makes a certain path in the sky every day, and at noon, the sun should be at its zenith, its highest point. Coordinated universal time makes it such that that is going to be true as much as possible. So a sundial, which would be the most accurate clock for the sun, uh, will read uh, noon at true noon. So what's happening? Why doesn't coordinated universal time agree with international atomic time. Leap seconds. Forget leap years. I know you know what a leap year is. Uh, the leap year has to do with the revolution of the Earth around the sun and getting the calendar in sync. Leap seconds have to do with the rotation of the Earth around its own axis, such that the noonday sun is at the same point every single day. Leap seconds were introduced in 19... 72. So 1960, we started with this whole UTC thing. And by the time 72 came around, we had all these techniques to measure things accurately, measure stars, etc. Began to realize that the Earth is actually slowing down. Not 24 hours in a day. It's a little bit shy of that generally. Uh, sometimes it's faster, but on the whole, it is slower, slowing down to the tune of microseconds per day. All those microseconds add up, and eventually the noonday sun is not where it needs to be. Shelve that conversation for a second, okay? International atomic time, as we learned in the last video, is keeping time through the vibrations of a cesium atom. It is extremely fixed. It's not a constant, but it's pretty darn close. You know, the error is in parts per billions. Uh, so it is the definition of a second, but it is not the definition of a second as defined by the rotation of the Earth, 1 over 86,400, or whatever that number is. This, the second is inflexible. The Earth happens to be flexible. We have two needs for time, right? 
We want to be able to record the elapsed time of a race to great certainty. We need uh, atomic clocks for that, international atomic time, definition of a second, all that stuff. But we also need to know that at 6 or 7 or 8 in the morning, we wake up, the sun's at a certain position on the horizon, at the noon, the sun is here, at sunset, the, the, it, it's over there. It's kind of a different idea of time, more of a, a, a more definitive time, if you will. I'm going to introduce a new time scale. So we had international atomic time, you know what that is. Coordinated universal time is the thing that the whole world uses. It does not match atomic time. It's got leap seconds in it. I'm going to introduce a third scale that is only in use by really smart people. <laughs> it's called UT1. UT1 is more of a, I'm going to say astronomical, not astrological, astronomical kind of time scale. And it's very important to astronomy that when they point the telescope somewhere at night, the same thing is in the same spot that it was the night before. Fixed objects do not move. So going back to the prior conversation that we had maybe two or three minutes ago, these scientists start to realize that when they go to measure something, a, a, a quasar or something, whatever they're measuring, it's not in the same position it was exactly 24 hours ago. It's taking a couple more microseconds to get there. They're using long base inferometry, really, really accurate measurements. So they found that the Earth is slowing down. We need to add leap seconds such that when your watch hits noon, the sun is at its zenith point. So in 1972, they decided to, we need to start adding leap seconds. They already figured out in 1972 that international atomic time and this new UTC standard that was adopted uh, about a dozen years earlier was off by 10 seconds. So immediately, 10 seconds are gone from our lives. And uh, in 1972, it was fixed that coordinated universal time plus 10 seconds is international atomic time. It kind of hurts you, my brain a little bit to think about. That's why I got to look down at my notes. And then those people I talked about, astronomers looking at quasars and measuring things, they are part of the IERS, International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Services. They maintain that uh, UT1, a uh, UTC minus UT1 uh, and as a reference to international atomic time, that it does not vary by more than 0.9 seconds. Once they feel that the sun is going to be more than 0.9 seconds off of, um, off of its zenith, they will go and schedule a leap second to be inserted into uh, coordinated universal time. So the graph for yeah, UTC, uh, UT1 minus UTC is a very jigsaw uh, pattern. Uh, so once it gets to 0.9, boom, they add a second and it falls below zero. So then we're like minus 0.1 seconds ahead. And then slowly as time goes, it creeps on. The agreement is that leap seconds will be added generally at the end of June and the end of December. There are provisions that in case they need to add one sooner, they can add one uh, at the end of March or the end of September. Since the leap seconds have been initiated in 1972, besides the 10 that they added, they've added 27 leap seconds. The last leap second was added, I believe, in 2017. And there currently are no plans to add any yet. It seems like uh, we're, we're, we're still looking good with our noon day sun. Um, but adding leap seconds is very complicated to a lot of people, very complicated to a lot of clocks. Uh, it seems simple in theory, right? So the clock goes from 11, so they added at midnight, right? 11.59 and 59 seconds. They go to 11.59 and 60 seconds, then 12 o'clock and zero seconds. So you add one extra second in. But that can be really confusing. And there is a plan to abolish the use of leap seconds by the year 2035. What will happen, who the hell knows? They might just add a leap minute. Think about it, we've been doing this now since, well, since 1960, since UTC started, we are 40, 50, 65 years into it, and we're only 37 seconds uh, out of sync. So maybe as long as the Earth doesn't start slowing down too much, Superman doesn't start spinning around or anything, uh, we won't need a leap second for, a leap minute for, uh, you know, 100 years, 200 years, whatever, and that would make things a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, so when you look at your watch, and you, let's say you synchronize your time to 
uh, Boulder or Maryland or wherever it may be, wherever the clock is in your country, uh, you are actually 37 seconds off of international atomic time, and that is okay. That's the way it has to be for us to keep the sun in the same spot every day or else we're going to drift. As a point of note, very interesting that GPS clocks, the GPS constellation was uh, reset in January of 1980. All the clocks were reset. GPS clocks, by the way, aren't time clocks. I might have discussed this in the last video, I'm not sure. They just count up. They're just counting up in seconds. And when, it, the, and when because they were done in the 1980s, the memories on the GPS clocks in orbit are not extremely high. So they do have to reset that counter after all the containers with bits fill up. So I believe the counters have been reset at this point at least once, it might be twice. Back in 1980, when the GPS constellation was originally launched, International Atomic Time and UTC were off of each other by 19 seconds. We had inserted nine leap seconds since 1972. GPS time becomes fixed at that point. GPS time will always and forever be off of international atomic time by 19 seconds, and right now it's off of UTC by 18 seconds. 19 plus 18 equals 37. So when you think that your phone or whatever is getting the accurate GPS time, just know that GPS time is also off uh, by UT at, from UTC right now, 18 seconds, uh, international atomic time forever, it's off by 19 seconds. Hey guys, editing Mark here. Uh, video Mark forgot really quick just to say that although the GPS clocks are not sunk to atomic time or universal time, your receiver, whether it be in your phone or other device, makes the correction automatically uh, such that the GPS time you are seeing is in fact uh, the true coordinated universal time, even though the satellites up above are running at an offset. Uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the second journey of time. Uh, we covered three time scales this time, international atomic time, uh, uh, coordinated universal time, universal time one, oh, and GPS time, kind of. Maybe that's what the next video will be about. Who knows? Anyway, this has been Mark from longonwatch.com. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not done so. More content, more crazy content like this for sure will follow. And also watch reviews and good stuff like that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.